everyone. Welcome to everyone that uh, follows me on Me and My Wellness and for those that uh, listen to my podcast, Health Up. So uh, this episode uh, is on health tips. I'm Anthony Harcher, clinical nutritionist and lifestyle medicine specialist seeking to enhance and enlighten your well-being. Today's topic is on sleep tips and how to optimize your sleep. So with sleep, it requires us to do things right well throughout the day and at night. So it's not just a nighttime thing. It's, you know, we need to do the right things during the day to help us to be in the best state to sleep. So let's start with the day. What do you need to do? It starts with you getting outside, getting some sunshine. So early morning, get out, uh, get that early morning sun, and that early morning sun is telling the cells, telling the organs, hey, it's daytime. It's time to do daytime functions. Uh, and so it will set your body up for doing functions around digestion and creating energy so that you can be productive. And uh, so those sort of things will be switched on by just getting sunlight. So making sure you're getting out, getting some early morning sunlight to let the body know to reset its clock, internal clock, uh, to daylight functions. The next thing that is very important is to limit caffeine consumption. Uh, so you don't want to have too much caffeine. If you're going to consume caffeine, consume it in the morning and not too much. Uh, so it's recommended to have around, only around about two milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So if you weigh around 70 kilograms, that's 140 milligrams of caffeine uh, before midday. And that's essentially depending on the type of coffee you're drinking or coca-cola it's you know it's going to be around the you know a cup or two cups of coffee maximum uh but you i'll uh, put in some helpful resources around how much coffee is contained in certain items uh in the links below or in the comments below where i post this um the other thing is movement so being active throughout the day uh, so that entails just getting up and about uh, moving throughout the day uh, and you know increasing your step count. So a good proxy to getting a good night's sleep is getting around those 10,000 um, steps per day. Uh, ideally, you want to be above that seven and a half thousand. And you know, doing some exercise is also also going to help uh, beyond the movement. Uh, so being active creates this what we call sleep pressure. Uh, so that helps us to uh, or helps the body to think well. I'm quite exhausted uh, by the end of the day and helps us fall asleep and, you know, I guess recuperate and do the things that we, our body does when it's sleeping. Uh, so let's get on to the things you need to do in the evening. I've covered the morning uh, or the day. And then in the evening, it's very much eating two hours before bedtime, at least two hours. So you don't want to be going to bed on a full stomach or on an empty stomach. You want to be going to bed just right. Uh, so that's a happy medium that you need to find. And so therefore, it's not having a late meal just before bed. And it's obviously not going to bed starving. Uh, we don't want to be drinking too much. And I'm, I'm say, stating here, I guess, any liquids, because those liquids will put pressure on our bladder uh, in terms of that we need to go and urinate during the night. And so that can in, in, impede or uh, affect our uh, good quality night's sleep. Uh, so minimizing your liquid consumption in the evening. Now let me talk about alcohol because I'm sure that's on your mind. Uh, so alcohol may help you get to sleep, but it will actually affect your quality of sleep. It will um, create you to wake up uh, more frequently in the night and will affect the ability to get deep sleep. So minimize alcohol consumption. I recommend only one standard drink a night if you feel you know you like that as a social thing uh, to have with your family or with your partner. So yeah, keep it to one standard drink per night. And the other important activity that research shows, this is a very important activity, uh, there's studies that have been done around it, is to empty your brain. Uh, so you know we can be very busy during the day doing lots of things. In the evening, we want to unload that busyness and put it on a bit of paper. So it's you know journaling your thoughts, what's going on in your mind, your to-do list, uh, getting that down, getting it out of your brain onto paper, how you're feeling, um, you know the tasks you need to tackle the next day, 
Um, and a bit of positive journaling, such as, you know, a gratitude journal. What are you grateful for that's happened that day that, uh, or what are you excited about next day? You know, like, so just sort of finishing that journaling activity, not with just all these tasks and all these unfinished uh, to-do lists, but it's also finishing it with something that's nice and something that you appreciate, uh, that appreciation relaxes us and, you know, tells the brain that everything's okay. Uh, the other important thing to do, you know, two hours before bed is to minimise blue light, light exposure. So this is, you know, our devices, our screens, things like that. Uh, so it's, we really want to dim the lights, have minimal lighting, and that also is telling the cells that signal that, hey, it's time to do nighttime functions. It's time to produce the hormones that, you know, we need to sleep, such as melatonin. And we need darkness to induce that. So starting that earlier, so starting that two hours before bed is really helpful. And to relax in the evening, you certainly want to be relaxed. Uh, you don't want to be winding up by doing work or having uh, tough conversations in the evening because uh, that will just switch that uh, nervous system on to that fight or flight uh, you know, response, which we don't want. We don't want that adrenaline running through our body. We don't want high cortisol. Uh, cortisol will reduce the amount of sleep hormone that we can uh, produce. Uh, so we want to re be relaxing, doing things we love, things we enjoy. Okay, so I hope that really helps. Uh, if you've got any comments, questions about what I've mentioned, if you want more clarity, or if you want me to cover in more detail a particular topic around sleep, please put it in the comments below where I post this. I hope it was insightful for you. That's my hot tips for the day around getting a good night's sleep and implement. Uh, you'll get great results. Okay, bye for now.